Hi, this is Mark from Waveform and this is the follow-up tutorial to setting up Fox Engo Span Spectrum Analysis Plugin in Ableton. So we've got a very standard beat, which we're just going to use as an example. So what we're going to do is use the EQ8, which is comes as standard with live. We're going to use its visualizer functionality and of course EQ functionality together. So we're going to set it to oversampling and set that by control click. So we want to use each cue at the best possible quality. So I want you to put an EQ8 in every one of the tracks you're going to use and double click on it to enlarge the view. So you can see in the other tracks we've all got an EQ8 set up the same way. And when I play the kick and I click on the snare you can see the different views for the different tracks show up. So really powerful functionality which I recommend you use in live makes mixing a lot easier. So if we go to our analysis channel which we set up in the last uh, tutorial so we go to kick set up the routing make sure it's post mixer and now snare and post mixer so you can see it's coming through at the same level as on the track. There's a little trick a little quirk within live which I'll detail at the end of this video. So we can see now if we go to the snare group we have the snare and the underlay which is a kick so we can see the overlap between the two of which there's quite a lot and we're going to focus on the area between 200 which is the fundamental of the snare up to about 3000 so you can see you can zoom horizontally in or out which is on the spectrum level frequency level and vertically you can zoom in or out which is decibel or volume level so it's very very powerful so what I do recommend is spending a good bit of time like anything you invest time and you get the most out of a tool so there's a lot of different ways to set up span everyone works differently so I recommend spending the time and learn how to use it properly but it is an incredibly powerful tool and uh, that time will be well spent so I prefer the fill display just for looking at frequency overlap for general mixing purposes if you're going for mastering uh, situation you might want to have a different setup so you can also adjust to display the ultra low frequencies if there's cleanup work you need to do them there and various other parts of how the actual display manifests itself you can also set up the general there's the general mode defaults there uh, for mastering various other things but uh, I just stick with the default uh, for, so I also like to use RT average which is real-time average which is similar to how the ear works so for me that gives you the best real-time response which is what I'm looking for in this particular functionality oh and one last thing and which I almost forgot but last but not least is block size so very important if you set it very low you're just going to get a very generalized frequency response so the higher you set it the more accuracy but if you set it very high that's a lot of that's very CPU intensive and the computer will struggle to update quickly enough so you've got a trade-off between speed and accuracy so choose something in the middle depending on the processing power of your computer So now we're going to move on to how to actually implement this in a practical example. Okay, so welcome back. So here's again our kick and snare pattern. So we're going to open up our analysis channel. Go into our span bus and take a look. Okay, so we just need to zoom out. So we can see we've got a lot of overlap, so starting at around 200 up and going up to particularly 3k plus, we've got quite a lot of overlap. So also down at around 50 odd, 54 is the peak, the fundamental in our bass drum. Obviously, double that will be 
harmonic, so around 108, 110. So you can see down in the low mids here, it's like 200 to 500. There's a lot of overlap between the snare and the kick. So there we've got a lot of scope for like attenuating or lowering volumes in certain frequency bands around this area to create some space and maybe accentuating others just to bring out the best in each track. Okay, so let's look at our snare first. So we engaged a low cut and we'll bring that up and see how far we can go. Now I'm just doing this very quickly just to show you an example. So this isn't a detailed tutorial on EQ. So we're gonna look and try and push that fundamental, which was 200 plus, I think around 230 odd. So we'll just move it around to see where a sweet spot is. So now we're getting a bit more of the body of the snare. It's my ears, the snare is a bit, got too much high end, high mid. It's a bit harsh sending, so I'd like to reduce that or attenuate those frequencies slightly. A bit too crunchy. So now it's duller, and for me, that's a, that's a nicer blend between the two. So let's just A, B those, so turn it on and off. If you are going to boost frequencies, also drop the gain down, the overall gain in your EQ. So you can see I've dropped it there by 3 or 4 dBs. So now in our kick, we'll go back to that frequency, I think I said 54 earlier, so we'll type that in. Now I'm going to totally over exaggerate here just to give you an idea. So, so I'll really over exaggerate and then pull it back. what we're doing is trying to put what's known as a point so we're reducing some of the ultra low and boosting some of the frequencies above that just to bring out the fundamental in the kick and to further strengthen this idea we're going to add a little bit of a point to that harmonic we were talking about around 108 So to truly hear the difference on, on low end stuff like that, you've got to have decent speakers or good headphones to have a decent bass response. So now our kick's definitely got more low end thump, but it's still quite muddy and flabby to my ear. Definitely got more weight. So let's try and reduce some of the low mid mud. Always a good spot. And a lot of kick drums is around area between about 245 and 350. So now we're gonna reduce the Q and sweep around. What we will do now is turn on the snare just to see where that space is required or we can separate one from the other. So that's cleared out quite a lot of space in the kick drum for the snare to breathe. in this drum the kick drum is really overpowering the snare so with no EQ I don't 
set very well together. Uh, definitely the blend between them to my ear anyway is certainly improved. Maybe dulling the kick drum a little bit as well. So now we've got a heavier, lower sounding kick drum and a snare with more weight, less harshness in the high mids. Even the groove sounds more solid now to my ear. So that's basically how to set up Span and use it in conjunction with Ableton's own EQ8 to improve your mixes, make more informed EQ choices and speed up your workflow. There's just one fine little thing I'd just like to show you. So there's a difference in the way the main outputs of any instrument or track in live works and how the sub outputs or specific outputs from something like a drum Mac work. So let's just show that in operation. So if we just play back our kick pattern, which is a simpler on an individual track, so the main output, if we raise it up, we can see, and this is on the post mixer setting, we can see that that is reflected. So changes in the fader are reflected within span. So our leveling is the same. So if I change that to post effects, now our fader will be irrelevant. So you can see we're still outputting to span at full scale, regardless of where the fader is. So that's one important thing to note. Another thing is the difference between how the main outputs and the sub outputs work. So here's the same pattern, kick and snare, but coming through one individual drum rack. So we'll go and imp change the inputs here so get it routed into span so we choose our drum rack then we go into the sub menu and choose say our kick so we'll choose post mixer so now i bring up the fader it's not affecting it at all so regardless of what you do to the fader in that case it's still going to output the same level so that's just something to be aware of within span also note that all of the inputs are mono so even if you're inputting a stereo track it's going to be some to mono within span so just to be aware of that hope this was a help and i'll see you in the next video thanks